Welcome to the Purity for Life podcast, episode 174. My name is Frank Honus. This week we talk about the power of community and the casualties of war in recovery. For more information on this podcast and other great resources, go to pflhome.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Purity for Life podcast this week. My name is Frank Honus, and it's really good to be with you. It's great to be um, seen and heard, right, on Purity for Life, uh, which our website, pflhome.com, or through the podcast on iTunes. I'm not sure how you're listening, but lots and lots of ways to uh, connect with the Purity for Life podcast. You can go to pflhome.com, which is our website. Lots of resources there and content all the way back to episode one when it was the Pure Life podcast, and now it's uh, now we are Purity for Life, uh, exist to existing to help men and women live with sexual integrity through Jesus Christ. That is the mission and that is the goal. So, and since probably about 2012, I think 2012 or so, um, have been doing this podcast. So, thank you guys so much for watching and listening again um, to to the podcast. So this week, I was um, driving uh, to work in the morning, and it was actually Tuesday morning that I really felt like the Lord kind of dropped this this subject, this topic on my heart that I didn't realize till, you know, a few days later would be just a really great um, direction for us to go in on the podcast this week. Um, But I wanted to talk about the power of community and the power of uh, you know, the significance of community and more more specifically, um, the significance and what I believe to be the necessity of, uh, of a recovery group uh, or a support group in your recovery. And, you know, thinking back on my recovery, one of the most um, influential, transformative, life-changing, earth-shattering tools for me in recovery was being a part of a support group, being a part of a, a recovery group for men who also struggled with sexual addictions and uh, from all kinds, pornography addiction, you know, uh, same-sex attractions, you know, guys who had committed, uh, you know, affairs, you know, physical, emotional affairs uh, in their marriage and just, just all kinds of stuff. And I remember the first night going, being just scared to death. Um, you know, taking this step and and really not sure, you know, what I what kind of room I was walking into and what kind of you know guys were there, and I just remember uh, some of the first few men sharing their stories and sharing about how their how their week has been had been going and um, you know how their recovery was going. And as each man shared, I just remember this incredible sense of relief and comfort and peace come into my heart. And then as I shared my story for the first time, really amongst a group of guys, it was almost like a key that just unlocked so much uh, freedom and began a process of healing in my life. And as I progressed through, you know, as I progressed in my recovery and as I, you know, kept going to meetings and kept going to these groups, there was a transformation that took place, obviously, right? When you share your story. I mean, John John 5, 16 is very literal. I want to read that right now. John 5, 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins. And here's the key phrase, I think, in there. One of the key phrases says, uh, con- Confess your sin. Therefore, confess your sin when you're all alone. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> therefore, confess your sin when you're by yourself. No, it doesn't say that either, right? What is it? I'm being silly, obviously. I'm being facetious. But it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be, what? Healed. And there's two, there's twice in that verse there that scripture tells us to confess our sins, confess our junk, confess our addictions, not to the wall, and it doesn't even say, and I'm just kind of walking a limb here, I know, but I'm not trying to get in trouble here, but it doesn't even say, therefore, confess your sins to the Lord, even though that's obviously something we, we need to do. 
but it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other. That means people. That means, you know, uh, more than just the wall. And, And it means, therefore, confess your sins, not just Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me, but it's through the confession, it's through the opening up of your life to people and to other brothers and other sisters who have walked through the same road and the same path that you've walked through that you find healing because through that, Jesus is able to work. The Lord is able to bring transformation and healing in your life. And and therefore, by confessing your sins, by, by opening up, by sharing your story, by being a part of community, you are literally uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you. And it's just an amazing thing. You know, a support group, uh, a support group and a recovery group is an incredible, incredible um, venue and an incredible tool for our recovery. And and here I am right on the podcast here doing this, but my my watch is like freaking out over here and beeping and beeping. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I I don't, I don't want to be distracted. I want you to be distracted. But anyway, um, so support group was just an, a great, great season for me. And I was a part of a live support group, a face-to-face support group of men for probably at least two years, at least two years. And I just found it to be so, so good for my heart, for my soul, my recovery. And I guess the reason I was prompted to talk about this this week, we've talked about this 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 topic before on the podcast, and you can go back, and I, I don't know what episode number it is, but we've talked about the significance of a support group. But this week, I was uh, I got a phone call from from a guy who was a part of the support group, the recovery group that I lead. I lead an X three group. Uh, I'm an X three group leader for Triple X Church, and you know I've I've been a leader for almost four years in that group. And um, I had a guy contact me this week who has been to four meetings, I believe, and he contacted me and essentially shared that uh, he no longer needed the support group, the, the, he no longer needed to come to meetings anymore, he no longer needed the group, that he was going to opt for one-on-one, quote, discipleship with another Christian believer. And so, um, and he had talked to it, talked to his wife about it, and she thought it was a better route for him to take. And he had talked to someone else in his family about it, and they thought it was a better route to take. And um, he basically went down this list of all the reasons why he thought it was a good idea. And truthfully, I had I had no idea what to say. I had no idea what to say. And so the very end of the conversation literally ended with me saying, "Okay." And um, I still respect this guy, and I still, pr- you know, I pray for this guy. I, I, I wish him the very best in his recovery, but I think it was probably the one of the greatest mistakes that he could make was by leaving this support group, and especially considering his story, knowing his story, knowing his, um, knowing his past, his his addiction, um, knowing the place that he's at in his recovery right now probably one of the greatest, greatest mistakes that he could make. And, um, I really, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be, um, I think it's gonna be a tough road for him because I don't really believe that he understands the, the, the value of community. And so I wanted to share, um, I wanted to share a little, little clip with you guys this week. Um, this, this past week on the, uh, on the anchor station, purity for life, uh, on anchor, you can go on to anchor.fm slash purity for life and listen to, uh, li- literally listen to throughout the week uh, my thoughts on recovery and 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 uh, and, and whatnot. But I shared a uh, a clip and uh, some thoughts that I felt like the Lord gave me on the casualties of war. And as I think about this um, this area of recovery, you know, uh, being a part of community and being a part of a support group, knowing other people and having other people know you. The, the natural picture that comes to my mind is is the battle scene and the war and it's have it's the it's the guys and the men and the women that are lined up with you in battle and in war and when you're on the front lines you can't you know you can't win a battle you can't survive by yourself and so um, I shared a little bit about this, this that this week on the anchor station and I wanted to po- repost that clip. And some of the thoughts will overlap a little bit of what I just shared uh, with you guys. And um, 
but I but I wanted to wanted you guys to hear, and if you didn't hear that this past week, I wanted to share that again with you uh, on on the casualties. What I what I sort of summarize is, um, you know, uh, in in recovery, and uh, you know, especially recovery from addiction. The sad thing is that there are at times casualties of war, and I'm not necessarily saying that that this particular guy I just mentioned to you is a casualty of 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 recovery. You know, I don't believe he's given up, but I also don't believe that he took a step forward in that phone call to me. Unfortunately, I feel like he took a step back, and I feel like maybe he retreated a little bit. And so I go on to share with you guys a little bit this week on some just deeper thoughts, a uh, little bit a little bit more context of, you know, uh, my feelings as a, as a man who's been in recovery for almost nine years, and just, just kind of share with you guys, um, you know, more in depth of... Uh, what that conversation was about, and my thoughts on support groups, and uh, I'll we'll be right back after that clip for some further thoughts and to uh, to wrap up the podcast this week. But would love to know your thoughts on on the Purity for Life podcast. So please head over to pflhome.com. And I haven't mentioned this. I need to start mentioning this uh, on a more of a weekly basis. But we would really love. I would really love your uh, feedback. And that one of the greatest ways you can do that is to go onto iTunes and give us a review and rate the Purity for Life podcast and also give us a review and let us know how we're doing. Give us your feedback, your thoughts, uh, you know, what you would like to hear, what, you know, what I'm doing well, what I'm not doing well, what we're touching on, what uh, we should be talking about. And uh, that would be a great, great help to the, to the, to the Purity for Life podcast. So, um, enjoy, uh, enjoy some of these thoughts that I shared this week. This is kind of some of my emotion in the raw, and uh, but I, I just wanted to share real transparently with you guys about the casualties of war. Yesterday, I was reminded that just like in war, in recovery, there's going to be defectors, and even sometimes there's going to be casualties. Um, this is sort of a, a sort of a strange revelation. I feel like I was given. Um, based on uh, an individual who, uh, in the support group that I lead, um, only after four months, or excuse me, not even four months, four meetings, which is uh, equivalent to one month of attending the group, um, called me up and said, hey, I'm not going to be coming to group anymore, and um, shared with me his reasons why, and uh, this was just, you know, overall very difficult for me to swallow, very difficult for me to comprehend, because as a man who's been in recovery for um, going on in my ninth year of recovery, I have found to be one of the best, if not the best tools for recovery uh, for a man is a support group, is being a part of a group of men who have struggled the way that you have, or who have sexual addictions, or who's maybe even whose sexual addiction is different, but you guys are still all fighting the the, the war together. You're all fighting the battle together. And so as as this person shared with me their quote-unquote reasons for uh, why they switched or why they decided to leave the group, um, it was was very, very disheartening for me to be able to comprehend. And, um, you know, there is a part of me that is tempted to take it as a personal attack, which I know it's not, or to take it on as a a personal defeat, but um, in that vein this morning, I'm just feeling a little frustrated, a little discouraged for this person, uh, because I have a feeling that uh, this person is going to have a long road ahead of them, and a lot lot of work to do, and and still a lot, lot more maturing to do, and I don't believe they have a full comprehension of um, how intense of a battle this is and how much energy and time and effort that you have to put into it. And um, I just, you know, I got that as I was getting ready to leave for work this morning. I was thinking about just um, all of the wins and the victories and the men that I've worked with that have gone on to success and victory and health and growth in their life from, um, you know, from their sexual addiction. And every so often, um, a guy will come along where, he shows promise and um, shows desire to be free, but when it comes through, when it comes down to it, there's really no complete follow through. And 
Uh, he ends up either quitting or leaving um, or just, you know, just showing a really weak effort. And, um, you know, the reality is that that's going to happen. That's real. And uh, not every man who fights this battle will win. And not every man who fights this battle will be able to stick it out and uh, follow through. And so I'm praying for this guy and I wish this guy the best on his recovery efforts. But I know that um, without being a part of a, an environment, a format where guys know you and you know other guys, um, long-term health and long-term victory is, is really not sustainable. And I don't think it, you know, unfortunately, and not, not to be negative, but, but in this person's situation, I don't think it, I don't think it will be. Um, because they haven't, they haven't really shown the effort or, you know, given, even invested the time, you know, three months, six months, you know, into, into this kind of, uh, recovery, uh, opportunity. So just a, just a thought there today that, um, you know, again, just to summarize what I shared at the beginning, um, just like in, in the heat of war, um, in, in our recovery journeys, there will be those who defect and fall back and even run away. And we hate to see this and I hate to see this, but there will be also defect or uh, casualties of war, uh, in recovery, those who, who don't make it. And I think part of that, just as a last thought here is I think that my heart goes to wanting to cover that guy wanting to make sure that guy's protected, but I can't control that guy's decisions. I can't control whether he steps out into the line of fire and I can, I can fight alongside of him. I can back him up. I can cover him, but only for, for a short period of time because he is responsible for it, for his defense. He is responsible for his protection. He is responsible, most importantly, to fight and to, you know, to fight the battle. And, um, and I can't, I can't be there, and, and other guys can't be there every second of the day to do that. But um, he's also got to. He also has to be a part of, uh, be responsible for his own recovery. And a huge strength for a man is being in community and in groups. That's why I'm so passionate about about support groups, about you know recovery groups. Uh, especially the ones that are Christ-centered and, um, you know, accurately, uh, accurately work with, with those in recovery. And, uh, so yeah, just a few thoughts on support groups and casualties of war in recovery. And I hope that's a blessing for you today. All right. So that is some of my thoughts. Uh, that was some of my thoughts this past week about, uh, recovery, about support groups, about what it feels like when you have a guy come to you who, instead of leaning into his recovery, is retreating. It feels like he's retreating in many ways. And I think, I think, I really just feel like every guy, every man has to walk and has to experience um, the bumps, has to experience the potholes, has to experience the rough patches. And I think it takes every single man, you know, every single man's journey is his own journey. And there's no, you know, magic pill. There's no solution that that gets every man from start to finish and from A to Z, you know, the same way. And so um, I am praying for that particular brother, but I'm praying for all the guys out there right now. And I pray for every single man out there who um, this week you have, instead of leaning into your recovery, you've actually retreated. Maybe you haven't given up. But you just you just haven't you just haven't given your you know your hundred percent. You haven't given everything your your blood, your sweat, your tears to your recovery. You haven't uh, been willing, really, to do whatever it takes to get free and to find healing. And that is a place of brokenness. That is a place of um, uh, a, a rock bottom place, as I have shared before. That I think I really feel like that a lot of men that I feel like not a lot of men, excuse me, every man needs to come to. And it really is a place where, uh, where we need to find, um, find healing. And and it says in Psalm 51, actually, I wanted to read this. I've read this before, but Psalms 51 
Verse 17 says, My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. And again, the emphasis there in that verse is the word, what? Broken. It wasn't until I was broken uh, from my pride. It wasn't until I was broken from my independence. It wasn't until I was broken from that place of, of just thinking about myself, my own cravings, my own desires, my own, you know, medicating my own pain. It wasn't until I came to the place where really I realized that my life was destroying, my addiction was destroying someone else being my wife. And I feel like every man has to reach their own place of brokenness, their own place of their own rock bottom place. And so again, this this podcast this week's is about a lot of things, but if you're not a part of a support group, if you're not a part of a group of men or some kind of whether it's a celebrate recovery group, whether it's a men's Bible study at your church that you know uh, focuses on some kind of a, you know addictions or, uh, or or really more specifically, what I feel like is the best kind of thing is being a part of a group that is specifically for de- for sexual addictions, and I want to encourage you to find that um, there are groups locally probably in your area or, or or if they're not there's there's all kinds of online resources online groups. There is um, x3groups.com, which is the actual group that I, the, the ministry I'm a part of that I lead a group for. And there's 30, 40 some groups that you can find a, a time, anytime during the week to be a part of. Uh, but but again, there's prob- there may be groups in your local area that you know that a church host or meet somewhere. There's S, you know, SA, uh, Sexaholics Anonymous, uh, just all kinds of resources and opportunities out there. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, if there are people, if, if, if you are not known as a man, if you don't know people and people don't know you, you will not make it very far in your recovery. And I'm just saying that to you point blank and just lovingly, but and not in a judgmental way, but just in a reality, because we cannot survive by ourselves. We cannot make it. We can't find healing. We cannot grow. If we are hiding in the shadows, if it's just that quote, me and Jesus mentality, okay? And there's a lot of, and I understand the motivations there are pure, but but literally, um, we cannot find healing in isolation. And that's just the reality of it. And, you know, uh, knowing this particular brother's track record, um, he has unfortunately um, fallen back and, you know, into slips and relapses, um, even when he's met with people one-on-one before. So, you know, that was a discouragement for me and it was sort of frustrating for me. And I feel, I feel my heart goes out to him, but you know, I, he, he has to come to a place where he realizes that he cannot get healthy by himself. And, you know, being a part of a support group is realizing that I'm not only, I not only need to depend on other guys, but there's other men out there that need you and need to depend on you. And I don't think that mindset, I don't think, um, I don't think this brother was able to, uh, had gotten that. There are men in that group that actually really needed him. And it wasn't just about him. Your recovery is not just about you. Is it primarily about you and for you? Absolutely. But it's not just about you. There's other men who need you and they need your voice. They need your influence. They need your, uh, presence in their lives to encourage them just as much as you need encouragement from them. And so there's so many great reasons to find a support group and find a recovery group to be a part of. It's not weird. It doesn't make you, uh, you know, weak or anything like that. Um, there's just so many good things out there. And if you need information, I would love to be able to give you that, uh, where to find a support group or be a part of X3 groups uh, online, which is a great format to be able to connect to a, a group uh, through your computer or your, your smartphone, or your, you know, your tablet in the, in the comfort of your own home and have a set time throughout the week and uh, just great opportunity. So uh, please touch base with me, send me a message on Facebook or well, through Purity for Life. And I would love to be able to help you out with that. So thank you guys so much for watching and for listening. 
to the Purity for Life podcast this week. Um, we got some great things coming up this season on the on the podcast, and so I hope you'll you'll stay tuned with us. Remember to go onto iTunes and rate the Purity for Life podcast. You know, give us a review, give us a rating there, and uh, we'd love your feedback on uh, on all that we're doing, all that we're trying to do to help help men and women live with sexual integrity through Jesus Christ. Have a great week. Love you guys. Blessings. God bless.